kicker to life when a page is being duplicated, when a section is being duplicated, and even if a block is being duplicated. And that's both classic sections and classic pages as well as Fluid Engine. So really, really exciting and pumped to show you how this works and just kind of some flow tips on how to get that going. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna share my screen and let's just find a tab to share it. Great. Cool. So I assume everyone can see that fine there. So give me a thumbs up if you can see that fine. That'd be awesome. I'm going to assume that. Yep. Yeah, great. Awesome. Oh, Brilliant. Thanks, All right. Thanks, cool. So we oh, have so many thumbs. Thanks, guys. <laughs> thumbs, thumbs. Um, and yeah, so here I have just a wee website here with Square Figure installed. So this this page here is a little sidebar kind of thing here. So there's a little sticky sidebar here. Um, and as you scroll down, you know, it kind of has another sticky sidebar. So really kind of a cool option for like, you know, a menu or a restaurant website is what we call this here. Our designer put us together for some creative content. So that's been a cool thing to use here. So if you find yourself needing a page like this multiple times, of course, you'd want to duplicate this. So to do that, you do your, your normal Squarespace options in your cog here, and you head down to duplicate page. And when you hit duplicate, it should be pretty underwhelming because everything should just work the way you expected it. But there's actually a lot going on. Square Cooker is doing some magic here. As you can see, there's a blinking blue dot, which means it's creating changes, it's saving changes, it's backing those changes up, and it's printing, and then bang, it stops, and it's ready to go. So now I have a new restaurant copy page ready to go. And if I hit save, and boom, all my Square Cooker edits have been transferred over. Now, I think a lot of you guys will have been pretty stoked when this came out, because this hasn't been a thing that we've had since day one. So the last two years, you've had to actually reapply these with you know, remembering what you did or maybe using a preset, which is all really exciting and useful things. But this just imagine, just, it just allows you to kind of speed up so much faster. Um, and so anytime you're using your site with Squarespace, you can do this. Now, another really exciting thing that you can do also is click on the edit and we're gonna jump in and copy a section. Um, now let's just go and say, yep, this, this really cool um, feature here with the sticky block section, this sticky section. I want to do another one of these. So I'm going to head in here and I'm just going to hit duplicate. And again, it seems underwhelming, but actually what you've done is you've created an entire new section with new blocks and have assigned a whole bunch of more styling for Square Kicker within a second. So all that new code has been reassigned for those blocks. And if you click onto a block, you can see all your styling changes were already there and ready to go for you to carry off where you left off. So you can just keep creating as many of these as you want. So once you have a section that you're happy with, you can just can continue to replicate it and pop them through. Um, another fun, exciting thing that Squarespace has recently just introduced is the ability to duplicate blocks. Blocks is super fun, especially with Fluid Engine. And as you probably will know, that there are a handful of reasons in Fluid Engine why you're going to want to duplicate blocks. Um, so this is another fun, playful side here. There was quite a lot of spinning things going on, things moving down, things falling. You might have seen this on the Fluid Engine kind of promo page. So a lot of cool, fun, exciting things. But if I click on the edit and I say, cool, I, I like how I've set up this block. I've got here, I've got a border. Uh, which is this outside bit here with a rounded corner. I've got a shadow um, and I even have some scrolling effects, which is making this really cool movement happen and spin and move along the side. So I'm not going to go into the details of how I made this, but what's really fun is you can click on it and now it has this little feature here for duplicate. So you smash that button and sure enough, it's what you expect. You now have another one of these duplicates. So I'll just line them up here and you can watch them how they kind of both spin together now because all that square kicker edits as well were again copied, duplicated, and applied to your site in, in a second. So that's that's really fun. There's another cool way of duplicating things, and that's just by holding down your option key on your keyboard. You click down option, and as you click and drag, you can then just move something somewhere else and drop and let Square Kicker do its magic and Squarespace do its magic. And now you've got all your blocks that have been duplicated. So again, really, really fast and cool, easy way of just smashing out content. Now, the one thing you do notice is that you can't drag a block up into another section on Fluid Engine. So you think, okay, how am I gonna get 
one of these blocks into another section. Well, let's just for another quick trick, let's just undo this by going back, undo my blocks copies, my blocks copies. And if you want to know a cool secret, Square Kicker. So many copies. So many copies. Square Kicker <laughs> is actually removing that code as well for you. So you're not left with a whole bunch of code that you wrote with Square Kicker. And then if you delete blocks, delete sections, even delete pages, Square Kicker is actually skimming the page. It's even skimming the recycling bin. If pages have been around for 30 days or longer, we get rid of all that code to so your site's not bogged down. So that's a cool handy tip as well to just be, be confident. So let's say I want to actually put one of those blocks here. Well, you can click on a block that you want to copy. And this is where you do your simple, you know, you've got Microsoft Word, you've got Canva, you've got a lot of options. Your, if on a Mac, it's Command C, or if you're on a PC, I want to say Alt. And um, if you want to paste somewhere, click on a section and Command V or Alt V and da da you have a block that has been pasted into another section that is ready to go. Now you might think that's pretty cool and, and so do I, I think that's awesome. But what you might not know, and this is not very well talked about, if you head to another page now with that in your clipboard, click on here, come down into another part of the site. Let's just go to just some of the section here and hit paste. Now, what did I just do? I've actually added a block from another page that has been styled, created with Square Gigger copied it and pasted it into another page on my site elsewhere. Now, I don't know about you, but that is <laughs> super fun. Like the fact that you can do that at rapid speed and all your square kicker edits carry over with you is just super exciting. Um, we talked to our designer and thought, you know, what, what are some sort of some ways that you can um, use square kicker? And she actually uses this the most, I think more than anything else, just always copying stuff all the time. We're gonna get into workflow tip just in a moment, but I wanted to share with you one more thing about copying and pasting. Just um, before you move oh, on yeah. from that one, just correct me if I'm wrong, but you can select multiple blocks and copy those. Mm. So if you're on a page and you wanna select all of those blocks that are in one section, you can actually highlight them all together, copy that and then take those all with you. So you don't have to go one block at a time. You're in my mind. So that's what we're gonna do now. So <laughs> what we're gonna do now is if you can see, if I flick over to mobile, I'm just gonna see how this looks on mobile. Okay, so it's it's looking all right. It's it's not exactly how I want it to be, but let's just let's just go with it for a moment. So everything here is set up to be on, on mobile the way I want it to be. And then I click over to um, Squarespace and I can hold down and drag multiple blocks. In fact, I wanna make sure I get all those blocks. Where's my L? Is the L still in there? Maybe I'm not getting my L. Oh, there it was. There we go. So now I've got all those blocks and then I copy that. And you can head to another page like I've just done another section, but here I'm just gonna go paste and bang. Now I have multiple blocks that I've just pasted onto the site. And let's just drag this down a little okay. bit further because we got some funky things going on here. All right, so now we got these two bits of land going on. Now the really cool fun, thing with, well, wow, that's actually a really cool effect. I did not expect that to happen because <laughs> Sticky, of course, is in the exact same spot. Wow, I think you can think of some really fun things to do with that. Um, cool, so the really fun thing to do with this and to remember with this is when you copy and paste this, you might make a really cool collage, a series of images, blocks overlapping and go, cool, I wanna smash this out four times across my, my landing page. Pro tip, I picked this up from Chris Schwartz Edmonton's, Edmonton's videos, um, shout out to him. And on his video, he says, make sure you set up your mobile first, because then when you set up your mobile first, Squarespace is also going to remember what you had set up on mobile as well. When you're saying mobile first, you mean you do the mobile before you copy and paste, not necessarily that you have to design the mobile first. That's right. So in, in Fluid Engine, when you add a block to Squarespace, it adds it in the grid here in the order it was created. So if you style your mobile first before you paste it, I'm just gonna mess this up totally here and you'll see what I mean. So this is all messed up and it's wonky, but this one's nice and great. So let's go back here now. Let's see, my desktop version is still good, but if now, if I copy that and then I paste it again, it's about to get crazy. Where is those blocks? Somewhere over there. Let's put it over there for a moment so I can drag this to the bottom. Keep going to the bottom. I got so much going on here. It's getting inception now. Here we go. <laughs> Sweet. So even though the desktop is looking great, because I thought, yep, that's exactly what I want it to be. But if you head over to mobile, 
it's going to be set up. That's my first section I messed up. This is the nice one. And then look, there's the second one that I messed up because I copied the first one and it carries that mobile styling over. So if you set up your mobile design in your blocks before you copy and paste it, that's going to be so much easier when you have to go through and change it for mobile. You don't have to worry about mobile ever again once you get a block set up and ready to go. So Such a time setup. hopefully that is a little bit of a, a helpful tip to do. Um, it's especially helpful if you're wanting just to try out methods and practice things and sections, duplicate it, practice it, use it, delete it, and then pick your favorite one and then just use that one for the rest of your sites. But I wanna let Hannah take over here a little bit and she's on Just before oh. we move on, oh, Tanya good. has just asked um, how we're doing the spin on there, which I know <laughs> we didn't describe, but it's quite a simple one. Do you mind just jumping on there? Yeah, and showing, sure, I'm happy to show, show you. So happens. scrolling effects, we're gonna make a tutorial. It's it's a complicated feature, but we wanna think, we, we wanna get it right. So um, at the moment, I've got a, a custom timeline here and that's saying that my block is this little triangle moving across the screen. So that's my little my little block moving on my timeline. And it says, when I get to the start of the timeline, when it gets down to here, which I can't get because I can't get any higher, um, that's the 0%. And then when I get to the very end, that's the end of my timeline for my blocks path. Now, what I do with that is depending on what options I have set here. So at the moment I have at the start of my timeline, it's gonna be 0%. 0% means it's not gonna move from its original position. Um, and then center, 0%, and then exit, 0%. So this has been set up, but then just put back to normal again. Um, transitioning, now we got 0%, it's not gonna move. When it gets to 0%, it's not gonna move. But then from this point here to 100%, it's gonna move from where it's originally put positioned to minus 32% the other direction where it's meant to be. So from here to here, it's moving that minus 32%. Oops, I clicked off it. Let's go back in there. So that custom timeline is just showing really the start of your section and where the blocks sit at the start of your section and then at the end of your section and where mm. the blocks are sitting there. So that's kind of if you imagine that timeline flipped, that's the start of your section on the bottom of your section. That's there. right. And the cool thing is um, on the, the non-custom timeline, you have the exact same thing. You just have no control about where that center point is, where the end, the start is and the end is. But the custom, you can actually say, oh, I actually want that to go faster to there. So I want it, when I get to here, I want it to already get to there. So then you can bring this right to here. And now the end is a whole lot faster to get to that point that you want it to be. And it just stops that point there. You can also drag these together. And now you have a center point or click and break them apart again to have that kind of move somewhere and then pause and then move somewhere again. And even last, you can actually bring up I don't want this to do anything until it gets to 20% of the way. And then I want to do a flip or a spin. So again, the spin part here is just that it's starting at um, 180 degrees, then it goes to zero, and then it goes out, it stays at zero. So just doing a flip as it comes in, and then it stays. And that's all we're doing there with scrolling effects. So some pretty simple things. Again, we're gonna make a tutorial, but as you can see, we wanna make it really specific and precise. And even now, but my words is quite jumbled on how this works. It's just getting in there and playing with things, see what it works, see what it does. And the cool thing is, if you don't like it, you can just delete it, start over again, or just clear all your settings and- Or um, better on. yet, use your duplicating function or your copy and paste, save that one, then move on and try and alter it a little bit. That's and right. then you're uh, you're not ruining your, or you're not losing that work that you've done if you want to experiment. And as you can see with those scrolling effects, you can add more than one effect. So it's just playing, you know, if you want it to come in and out and up and down or like this one's got the rotate as well you can combine all of those different effects to get so many different things which is uh probably part of the reason the tutorial is delayed there because i mm. think there's about fifteen thousand combinations mm. that we could put together absolutely so hopefully that helps tanya um i did see another one on the uh text on the blue page nick sorry i kind of lost who Oh, there we are. So the text animation, that was another Tanya one, wasn't it? Um, have we got this down? If you head down to the one where it falls, I think that might've been where you oh, were talking yes, about. Oh yes, this one here. Yeah, yeah, good. So that's another fun one. Essentially it's the same idea. So I'll just show you briefly what's happening. Um, so if I go and find one of these blocks, let's catch one of them. There's one of them. So here's an example of the timeline that it's currently going through. So when it gets to about 20%, so this is just the normal um, position that's coming down the screen. When it gets to 20%, it's going to get, it's going to start at negative 50 degrees. This is a spinning position. When it gets to the center, it's going to go to zero. So that's right about there. 
that's the center or, or it gets us 90 degrees now it's perfectly in line and then when it exits it's going to go from here to the end and it's going to exit 100 degrees so that's just the spinning direction the falling direction is again different but same timeline start at minus 67 so that's up the screen it comes down to center so right about here is actually originally where the block sits without doing any animation and then it's going to exit minus 46 so back up again to that timeline so it's going to go back up as i'm scrolling so that's a little bit of how those bouncing that's things what work. creates that little bounce effect as it's going you know negative and then it hits that zero point and then it goes back to the negative again so it creates that fun mm. little bouncy side and the fun thing with with duplicating blocks and things like this is you can duplicate a block once you get one set maybe make a small tweak so it has a different kind of delayed effects that are all similar but have a different kind of timeline awesome hey kevin i can just see that you've asked um about the url for that demo site that's a great point we have our squarespace inspiration pages i don't know if you guys have had a chance to jump onto there nick should we go over to that now and um we can just show everyone what i'm talking about because these ones that we're designing that we're using for our tutorial so we've got lauren our amazing designer she is jumping in there and creating all of these awesome pages um and we're popping them on this inspiration squarespace inspiration site but what's even cooler is we are also collating designs that you are submitting as users um, and putting those on there as well. So we go through every week and select a few of our favorites and then they're jumping into this um, little blog gallery that we've got going on here. Um, so that page that we've just been working on is in here. Um, we've just added some new ones in today. So even if you've been in but haven't popped in today, there's some new ones on there. So you can have a little scroll through and play. And hopefully that's a really fun place for you guys to get some inspiration and some excitement about the different things that you can do with Square Kicker. So there it is. There's our portfolio, the one that we've just been showing you. Um, so that's just on squarekicker.com under the inspiration page. Um, and if you want to submit some sites to us, um, keep an eye out on your emails. We're always chucking the link in there on how you can submit those sites. Cool. Brilliant. Let's head back to this other window here, which is the demo site. And let's hop into some workflow tips, Anna. Yeah, awesome. So I had a chat to, um, that designer that I was just telling you about Lauren and we were just kind of processing some workflow tips that we could share with you guys today. So one of the first things she says she does is go to inspiration sites. Um, when we were conducting some user interviews about six months ago, we were chatting to Square Kiki users and seeing how we could bring more value to the product and what you might want. And what came up multiple times is that there isn't a great place for um, Squarespace inspiration. So that was really where that um, the idea for that site came from that was uh i want to say michael sorry i can't can't quite remember right now but just we had some amazing chats they were all so good um so that's that's really where we came up with that idea for that inspiring squarespace website because you know it's great when you're starting a project to go like oh, i'm just lacking that spark and so hopping onto there so Definitely head out and check that one out. That's always going to be all Squarespace sites um, with Square Kicker. So, you know, anything on there can be achieved. There is sometimes some custom CSS that's still in there because as much as we would love it to, Square Kicker can't do everything for you yet. And there's some amazing um, custom CSS out there that you can use. Um, but generally what's on there can be achieved inside of um, Squarespace with Square Kicker. So another great one um, that we recommend is called Site Inspire. So I can chuck these um, for you in the email uh, when we send out the replay as well. And then also awards, the A-W-W-A-R-D-S. So those are two great sites as well to check out for some inspiration. So that's a first place to start if you're struggling with that beginning workflow. Um, we also suggest that you start with a blank template. So when you're jumping onto Square Kicker and starting off um, your first site, we find that you can bring a lot more inspiration to it if you start off with that that blank website because you're not kind of getting boxed into what's already put in there in those mm. templates um so that's a couple of tips to like really really get you started so that early start um definitely using that section by section duplicating so um when we you know what we would recommend for that the best workflow for using that duplicating feature is to design a section put all your content in there with squarespace 
then come along and do all of your square kicker kind of tweaks and customizations on top of that. And then after that, then do your duplication if you want to bring that down or use it on other places. But if you can kind of get one section really nicely set up, um, that's a great tip there for getting you started. Um, another great one which Lauren jumped on and shared on Instagram. If you're not um, following us on Instagram and that's a platform you are on, we are trying to put lots of little tips up on there um, pretty frequently for things like this. And this was one she shared recently. Um, and that is to duplicate things when you're trying them out. So say you've made a section, you really like it, but you've just got this great other idea. Maybe you've been onto some inspiration site and you've got an idea that you want to try, but you don't want to waste the time that you have just been designing that section. You know, if you grab those blocks and, and put them in another section, or if you duplicate that section, then you can play and you can have a go at, at changing it up and maybe you have something sliding in from another side or you're playing with those colors and then you've actually got those sections side by side to be able to compare them and see which one you like and which one you don't want and then just delete that one like nick said before when you delete a section or a block or, or a page from your squarespace site square kicker also removes all that code so you don't have to worry about bogging things down with creating the extra code and that's just a really nice way to make sure that you are getting the best from um, from that duplicating feature if you want to try out some new things. Um, another great feature for getting started is the uh, color palette. So this was a, a quick tip that Becca um, from Inside the Square shared on our Instagram recently. If you haven't checked out Becca's tutorials, we highly recommend you go there. She's amazing. Um, so she um, popped up this little tip, but it is something that we probably have taken for granted mm. um, and maybe have forgotten to share a little bit. So that was great. We really appreciated that, Becca. So what we suggest you do is you go onto um, your Square Kicker, uh, your Square Kicker editor. So if you pull up a page for me, Nick, or a... let's just go up a. Oh, we can go anywhere, actually, can't we? Yeah, we can. So if you pull up anything that has color in it, and then see you've got your wee color tab there, this is going to open up your color picker. And what we suggest you do is you come in and you save your colors that you want to use along the top there. Now, unfortunately, at this stage, we can't input the square space colors that you've chosen for your color palette. So the first thing that we would do here is grab all of the codes from your square space color palette that you've designed and selected and pop them into Square Kicker here. So um, what you can do is you can either use the color picker, drag it along, you've got the transparency there as well. Um, or if you want to, you can also type in the hex code. So say we just come up there and let's put in some Square Kicker yellow. Great, so you've got your Square Kicker yellow and you can see that it's showing on the side here, um, down there, and then as you hit enter we can go sorry we can go a little plus here and that's going to add it up into this color palette so anytime you pop a color down here add plus it's already gonna that one's giving me a little bounce because it's saying you've already got that color here but that's going to populate those colors up there <clears throat> you do have a limited amount here so if you run out and there's a color that you're no longer using on your site you can just take that off again but that's a really good tip so that you're not having to constantly remember those hex codes or come back and try and find the colors or match them um, so hopefully that helps get you going a little bit faster. Another wee tip here is with your fonts. Now, Square Kicker has Google Fonts. So if possible, what we would do just simply for speed of workflow is try and pick Google Fonts. So I know sometimes clients come with their fonts pre-selected, um, but if you have the luxury of picking those and you want to be able to use a little bit of creative font work in your website, um, picking Google Fonts that you know Square Kicker is going to have in here will just speed up that workflow really nicely. You can do, you know, searches in here. So say you want to grab something from down here, that'll be there. Um, and then as you select something, it'll light up and then you will get your um, fonts that you're using popping in the top there. So that hopefully is a couple of wee tips um, just for actually inside the UI of things that you can do to help speed mm -hmm. up that workflow. Yes, well, I do remember that the hex code for the SK yellow because I have typed it about 15,000 times. In the, <laughs> What's purple? In the last, uh, yeah, well, let's not rattle off the whole lot. What's all the whole we just out? changed our purple, actually, which is an interesting point. So we have just changed our purple because um, we're doing a little bit of exploration into um, web accessibility and looking at some of our responsibilities for web accessibility and how we can, um, you know, how we can 
I guess, be a part of that conversation, how we can make sure our product is really accessible, how we can make sure our website's really accessible. And one of the things we found was that the purple we were using wasn't great on the accessibility. Mm. Um, so we have actually just given that a tiny tweak and I can't remember the new hex code. Mm. Um, <laughs> But that we will be doing a lot more work on that and we will be looking into how we can share some of those tips with you guys as we move along as well. Mm -hmm. So Nick, let's get into um, exploring some of the Square Kicker tools and features. Um, oh, sorry, just before we do that, we have one other, mm. we have one other little- thing. I saw someone already asked a question about it, but talked about presets and presets is actually something that's different than duplicating the blocks. Presets is, is, is a place where you can actually go and create an item or a block specifically on one block and then decide what you want to use with Square Gigger and then you can use that preset across your website. So they're just we're just curious to see if there's a, a need or a, a desire to actually dive more into that or people pretty much understand that and use it already in their workflow. Yeah, perfect. So we've just popped a little poll up there. So if you would like us to give a quick demo on presets, do you want to just let us know in there? We'll give it just a couple of seconds. Yeah, it's, it's leaning on the higher side, eh? So it's about, yeah. it's about a bit more double than than. All right, today. let's do a quick jump onto those presets then. Cool. Um, we won't take ages in there. And, All right. Well, I'll just actually go over to this Playful website again, because this is a good example to show something that's quite complicated, took a while to use and move. And of course, that um, I, I could actually go in and duplicate it. But maybe if I want to use it on another page, or maybe if I want to tweak something now on this block, but I want it to also change on all the blocks. Maybe I want to change this color. So I went into the shadow here and I wanted to go into make this of this color here. When I've done that, I've only changed one block and I actually need to go through all of my blocks to change it. So if I cancel that and head over to my block here, inside of Square Kicker, you obviously see these yellow dots. This is where anytime Square Kicker has an active change, you would have seen blue for any time there'd be hover changes. So that's when you hover on the block and there's, you'll see like a little option for something has happened here. So then when you hover on it, there's gonna be a different animation here on this border. So that's the blue that we have there. So the last one is the presets. Now presets are purple. So when you head into a preset, you already have these options here. And I really didn't want to put my hover on there. So I'm just trying to actually remove that. Do you know, um, we've actually had a question to see if presets do include hover. Oh, that's a great question. <laughs> this is some technical debt we're worried about. So we haven't actually cracked the solution of involving presets and editing, I should say, editing hover in presets. You can still put hover on there, but it, it doesn't work as well as it should. Like the transition speed doesn't carry over. But gen generally, if you want to use hover, we recommend to just put it in on after the preset. We are working on some technical debt to actually include that because at the moment, when you head into a preset, you can make all your changes and styling um, right through inside of a preset and change them after the fact. But there is an option to change hover. That's been a really recent new addition, and we haven't gone backwards to add it into presets as of yet. So when you head into presets, the um, there's a whole tutorial on this as well. But essentially, you click on create preset, and then you're going to get an option with a name. So you need to get my um, my play um thing or style cool um all right so now i have this whole thing as a preset so now all these are purple the cool thing of this is you can actually add additional overriding settings to that preset so the purple is what the preset is but then now it's saying that this block has additional styling so we're not going to get too confusing but that's just what that purple and yellow does now when i head to um it's actually removed all my yellow and it's not saved the preset until i hit apply now that i hit apply i'm good to go and now the whole thing is a preset but now you can see when i head into preset and just turn it off that's actually removed the presets all the styling is gone from that block and I can apply it again really quickly. So if I just code down quickly now here, and I'm just gonna do some removing of some styles from this block here. Oh, I need to remove the advanced feature as well. Good. So now this block is like a vanilla block. There is nothing special about this block straight out of the box, straight from Squarespace. And then I head into presets and apply this block. And now I have both of these have been styled with one preset across the site. So this could be on multiple pages, multiple sections across your entire site. But now when you head over to a block and you click on presets, you have the ability to click on this little menu here and you know, obviously disable, edit, rename, duplicate, and create a slightly different one or edit. Edit goes into saying, oh, I want to actually change that color. So let's go in here 
and let's give that a weird green color. Oh, maybe we'll just do black. That's a contrast. And you can see when I'm changing that color, they're both changing because they're tethered together. So now you can make changes on both at the same time without affecting, sorry, with affecting both of them at the same time. When you duplicate a block, you don't, they're not tethered together like this. You copy the settings and you duplicate it out, but this creates that kind of sync or pair or kind of tethered together option. So everything you do has that ability. There's two options at the bottom. You can just update that preset or you can save as and create a new one. So you can have a different option here. Um, and then you can, yeah, so you can create, save as a new one. I just bricked something. <laughs> there we go. Too much clicking into live at demos. The same time. Oh, no, I know. I turned it off. Okay. So there we go. Um, let's just do that again. So edit. Sorry. Let's go to edit and go to shadow. And let's change it to a green here. And then you save as broken. That didn't quite work. I just got a brick there. Probably just need to reset it. You can update it or save as a new one. It does work. I promise. I've got tutorials on it and everything. So um, that's how you use presets in a, in a, in a square. Brilliant. Hey, that's always the joys of doing live <laughs> demos, isn't it? Um, sometimes we need to turn our computers off and on again as well. Um, awesome. So we, I'm just going to chuck up another little poll here to see how long you've been using Square Kicker. Um, if you've been with us for a while, you'll notice that we are rolling out new features fairly frequently. For those of you that haven't been with us for long, um, brief history, we have been live for uh, just over two years now. Mm. Um, it feels a little bit more like an entire lifetime, but that's that's half the fun of it. Mm. So um, obviously when we started, there wasn't a lot in the product and we have just been slowly building that up. And as Squarespace makes changes or adds new features in, we are trying to kind of keep in step with them and make sure that Square Kicker has some features to go alongside that. Obviously Fluid Engine was a big one for us. When that changed, we had to rebuild Square Kicker to keep up with that. So um, we're, we're constantly adding new things to mm. the product and new updates. So I was just mm. popping this in here to see um, how long you guys have been with us. Cool, that's a nice range there. So mm. some of you may have um, just seen the product in its current state um, and others of you may have seen some of those changes coming along, but it's always worth keeping up to date with the emails because there are new features that are coming in all the time. Um, so we have released some new features on Tuesday this week, wasn't it, mm, Nick? That's right. So do you wanna just take us on a wee demo <clears throat> through those? Absolutely, so let's jump out of this playful side here. And I think I have a site set up here. So we just made a tutorial on this, but I'm going to find it with all these other options here. So the cursors tutorial, cool. So mouse cursors, I hope people have had a chance to play with these. Let, let us know if you've already kind of jumped in and actually started using these, but I'm just gonna have a look at the site I've already made. So at this stage, I have a funny looking pointer mouse cursor here, but that is because um, I have a mouse cursor on this section, I believe. Let's just go and make sure. So there's three places you can put mouse cursors. It's in the advanced tools, there's in site. So I don't have anything set for the site, so that's good. So this is set up for the section. So let's open up section and go to square kicker in advance and down the mouse cursors. Now I have two options here. I have the primary cursor, which is the cursor I have in my section. And that's just how I get this little down arrow here. The other fun thing is I have the ability to do links. So this says uh, if I hover on a link, and the cool thing is when you hover on this little tab, you'll see any links on your section that you're currently in. Hence, you see that yellow outline on that friend word. That's because I've highlighted link and I'm going to get the ability to do that there. Um, it's not going to work at the moment because I actually have a, I have a mouse cursor on the block. So let's just head over there for a moment and head into block and all the blocks also have mouse cursors. So you can decide what your mouse cursor will look like when you hover on a block. So at the moment you can have, um, when you hover on anything in the blocks, so this is this outline here. So we can make this a emoji. So now it's a star. But then when I hover over the link, it's going to be some hands. So here's the option. And it's not working because Squarespace, funny enough, it says WYSIWYG, what you see is what you get. But the code is not exactly what it is until you hit save. And then actually rewrites the code for what it should be. And now when I head into here, there's some hands, there's some stars. So there's a little bit of kind of user experience. But for the most part, when you click on edit, you shouldn't really um, have too many issues seeing what you should be getting. It should just be in there. So 
let's have a look what else we can do. So emoji has, a, oh, this is a fun new loading animation as well. Um, you can just scroll through an endless amount. I'm not even sure how many thousands, but there are thousands of emojis in here. I think we just dumped everything in here. And you can just look at an entire library. And of course you can search for anything. So any, any suggestions out there? Fish, um, let's go for fish maybe. I just saw a fish somewhere. Cool, and I've got four different types of fish. So what have I got here? I got someone catching a fish maybe. And what else do I have? Um, and some sort of fish cake swirl. That's looking good. <laughs> that does not look I'll say, good. I can't quite see that. So let's just blow it up a little bit. Let's make it right big. You obviously see what it looks like down here as well, but now it's, it's a little bit of an interesting shape there. Great if you have a beach theme maybe, you wanna use something cool. And then maybe when you hover over it, it turns into a, an actual fish or a or a fishing rod or something else. Maybe a fish turns into an actual plate of fish. I'm not sure what we want to do with that. There's some pretty exciting weird things you could do with it. Um, the other things you could do is obviously get these cool words showing up. So that's that's a pretty fun new addition. That took a bit of fun to um, convince the team that we probably should do that, but I think it's well worth the extra time because that is super fun. I'm I love that feature. Let's hop into um, let's just use it. Obviously, there's two cursors here. We have one for the primary cursor and one for the link. So let's head into here. So we have a word here. Uh, we have which we have work. So let's just type in working. Good. And that you can see is already popped in there. And the click link, that's the area where the, the mouse click will be. So obviously, there's a huge word here. And you want that to be clickable for your user. So we're not killing the accessibility. Hence, we're talking about accessibility because accessibility is all about the user making it accessible um, and the tools to do that. So we can do the top center or we can do the top left, depending on where you want that click, wherever it makes the most sense. And then you can adjust the font family, your list of Google fonts like we talked about earlier. And of course, the size and what you want that mouse cursor to be. So that's quite big. And we can bring it down to really small and make it quite interesting and you can do the font way. So all your font tools on this custom click pointer here. So the, the fun thing about this is it's actually created an SVG, I believe, or a bit of JavaScript to kind of create this on your site. So that's really, really fun workaround. Um, and it's not a, a CSS solution like some of these other ones. And last one is a shape. So you have a circle here or you have a square. Actually, you probably can't see it. Let's fill it with something here. Uh-huh, cancel. Good. There's a square here and a triangle. And I saw this one on someone else's website recently. And you can do a custom triangle or other triangle. And this is a really good place to have a look at that click point, Nick, because oh, obviously yeah. you can see where that dot is positioned on the preview mm. right now. That isn't going to be intuitive for your user. They're going to expect that click point to be right there at the end of the arrow. Top so left corner. it is worth checking those out depending on what you're applying. Mm. Um, sorry, just while I'm chatting, Michael had asked the question of, are you going to be adding more shapes like stars or different polygons? We had a little chat about that. And what we um, kind of the conclusion we came to was that we would start with these four and then basically chat to users like yourself and see if there are other things that you want to be using. You know, you can get those stars and some of the emojis, but what we would really love to hear from you is if there is something that you really want to see, a shape that would be really interesting for you, um, please let us know. Chuck us a message in customer support or on socials or in the Squeaker community group. And if we get enough requests for certain things, we will definitely look at putting mm -hmm. um, some more shapes in there. Yeah, they're pretty fun. I've already seen a handful of people using them and super clever stuff as well. So it's been pretty fun to, to check out and see. So um, I think that's probably the most of it. So again, there is site mouse cursors. So this is everything on your site. So all your all your mouse cursors everywhere, except for when they, you can just say just the set of ones of if I have a link on my site, then you can go to a section. If a specific section has a mouse cursor like this one here, that you're gonna need this actually when you come down because if they were all the same color, you actually want to see that change that color there. So you see how that changes that color. You actually need each section might need its own mouse cursor. And of course, each block might need its own mouse cursor. So that's really fun as well. So it kind of creates this kind of word that kind of hovers around that block. And again, this image, if it's normally just an image with, without a link, needs a primary. If it becomes a link, needs a link cursor for those blocks. And you probably have seen these cool animations. That's the um, image block having a filter and on hover, you can change the hue. So let's turn that on. So that's just saying on hover, you're just changing the hue there. So that's just kind of that, how that option's popping in there. 
So you can add these mouse cursors on your entire site up at the top level menu. You can put them on section and you can put them on block. Um, so definitely worth having a little play around and check out there. What we are going to do with those mouse cursors is run a little bit of a competition. Um, so keep an eye on your emails and on our socials for that. Um, basically, we want to see what you guys are doing with them. We know there are so many different ways that you can use these and so many exciting options that you can do. So we are really excited to see what you're going to come up with. So if you're interested in that, there'll be a great little square kicker prize in there. Um, and then just a, obviously a really awesome opportunity for us to have a look at what you're creating and to share that with each other. Um, we've got a few questions here. We're just um, just on the mouse cursors, which we'll run through as we go along. So the little undo looking button or toggle, um, Tanya has just asked about that. Can you just show the undo button, Nick, and explain what that function is there? Sure. I'm assuming this is just inside of any Squarespace, any Square Kicker UI here. Let's open this up here. Cool. Are we talking about this little arrow here? I assume this is the undo here. So this little option here is, is a reset. So this basically resets and clears everything on this field. So if you don't want to have anything in here, you can go into sit clear. This one, actually, that was a pretty obvious one. Let's go back <laughs> to one that was a bit more. Here we go. So you can go through and kind of clear the color, clear, sorry, wait, pause, hold, click wait, pause, hold, click, and actually clear the color. But if you want to clear, say, everything in this option, you can go back one, and then you can clear everything in that option there or everything. So this is actually a clearing. It's clearing out all the square gigger edits. So you want to go back to default of what it was like. But the interesting thing is that this isn't applied until you hit apply. You can't cancel, and of course, it just cancels what you did. And so you can go back and you cleared it and go, oh no, that's not what I want to do. You can say cancel and it reverts that change that you're gonna do. So hopefully that answers your question. If you're on multiple device sizes, clearing my actually only clear that unique device, but in some instances, if you're on back of tab like here, you're actually gonna clear all devices because you're on the top level. So that's just something to be aware of. If you're going into a mobile device somewhere or a tablet and you hit clear, you might not just be clearing the tablet, you might be clearing the entire set of all devices. Yeah, cool. Great, great feature there. Um, so the other thing with mouse cursors before we move along then is a few people just asking if they can upload their own image or logo. Mm, we had talked about this. This was a feature we thought about, but at the moment, no. So the biggest hurdle right now is actually giving you, the user, to upload your own custom image or your own custom URL, and that's saving to some sort of external source or into Squarespace itself. So that's not a feature yet, because what we don't want to do is actually make it too complicated. So you have to go and upload it somewhere, grab a link, and then put it into an area somewhere. That's, it's not going to be very intuitive. And of course, if you don't want it, you want to delete it you have to go and find that area again. So we are looking at making some sort of easy to use upload a file and we do that. There's a whole world of exciting things that allows you to not only do fonts, but images and SVGs and you name it. So we're looking forward to that in the future. It's going to be very, very cool. Yeah. And so the same there applies with that custom font, Paul. I know mm. you asked that, asked that question there. Cool. Hey, thanks very much for that, Nick. Do you want to jump on to the um, next tool that we released, which was mm. the um, layers tool? Yeah, so the layer still. So this, again, this is another shout out from Chris Swartz Edmondson. And he was doing a tutorial um, and doing some work around trying to figure out how to make um, sticky blocks to work. And I thought, okay, so now that Fluid Engine is out, um, there's some really cool things you could do with Fluid Engine with Sticky. Because before you had a block, you might remember if you were familiar with Classic, they, they, you couldn't just place them anywhere you wanted to. They had to fit inside of a specific kind of grid. And if you want something to be sticky, sticky is a really confusing element to understand, but it's actually as simple on a CSS. But in order for sticky to work, its parent element has to be larger than the area it's being sticky. And it says, be sticky until the rest of its parent element is finished being, is scrolling and then scroll away with it. So Fluid Engine has allowed this to be really, really fun. But the hard part about this now is, that maybe you want these layers to be different because you want to layer them in a different order. So let's pop in here for just a moment and I'll show you what I mean. So if How pretty is this page? This page is awesome. This. There is a really cool tutorial coming out very shortly, by the way. This is a plug for this that will show you step by step how to make this entire page here with Sticky so you can be on your way with one click and be making this really cool feature on your website as well. So let's just hop into this block and remove sticky i'm just going to go over to say none and now this block isn't sticky at all 
Great. And this block also is sticky. So let's remove that from being sticky. Oh, that's right. It's right down at the bottom. Good. But no, that's right. It's at the top. So, um, so where did that go again? It was sticky for a second. So at the moment, you don't have any option to create layers. And layers on Squarespace are what they call a Z or a Z index. So that's the layer in which it was created. So Squarespace adds a number one, two, three, four, five, ascending all the way for as many blocks as you have on your site in the order in which you created them. However, if you drag a block up, let's just go here. And as soon as you overlap a block, it gives you the option to move something forward or move something back. So the one thing you could do is actually find the block you want to overlap, move something forward, move something back and say, oh, I want it on the front. And then you have to drag it back to where you want it to be and then reapply sticky and then it will actually be in that order. However, that can be a bit kind of it, unintuitive, really. It's a bit clunky. Yeah. So it, um, we had an option around how do we actually adjust those layers to say, I want this block to say always be on top or always be on bottom. So we actually gave that bit of flexibility and freedom. So let's put these back on sticky now and do sticky top so that will stay sticky and this one will be sticky to the top cool so now obviously say oh i really wanted that block to be in front but how do i get that underneath there well there's a couple things you can do you can put this one behind or this one on top so let's go to this one and now go into my layer field this is a new tool we just added layers has two options if you're familiar with canva you're probably very um, used to something like this so it's send it back or bring to front. So let's just go bring to front. Bang. That's it. Now this block will be on the front, no matter what I do, as I scroll across the entire site all the way down. But before I had it, you, you can kind of see that some of the images were covering up and some of them didn't. So that might not be a use case for everything, but it is a really quick snapshot of getting something to the top or getting something to the back really quickly. But if you want to say go through each and every block and you can specify what order want them to be, you can say custom. And then you can say, I want this to be, uh, let's just say number three. And then you can go to this one and go to layers. And then you can assign this to be number, you see we do four or you can go two. But then the next one that comes up, say, ooh, I want this one to be behind. Let's go into blocks and layers and do, let's just do five. But then the rest I want to be on top. And so they're going to be fine. So that's kind of how the custom layers works and our send it back center front of course default is the block order id that squarespace had which if you can count how many blocks here might be 15 might be 16 might be 100 depending on how many blocks so you won't know until you dive into the code but this here you can assign your own custom layer so very cool this comes in handy as well with scrolling effects if you have something scrolling up and down in your site and you want to scroll in front or behind something you can also use this to bring those layers to the front while things are moving in front of each other. Mm, really useful for that sticky and scrolling effects. Mm. Tanya, had Nick explained your question there already, or did you want us to still go over that? Intermission music. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, awesome. Covered it. Well done. Um, brilliant. Well, that is, that's really exciting. It's nice to see some of those tools like the layer tool coming out and kind of support of these tools of sticky and scrolling mm. effects and just hopefully give you just that extra layer of control so that you can take some of those more advanced features even further um, and create some pretty awesome stuff. Um, it's pretty amazing looking at stuff like this and going, yeah, that's, that's Squarespace. And you can still hand your client a really easy, intuitive site that they can do, but you have the, the control to, um, mm. you know, to add so much extra on the design and, side. And honestly, way faster than coding. I mean, I can code all this obviously, but it takes time, time, time to code things, inspecting things, storing things, amending things, something breaks. It's just a lot of time. So it just saves so much time. So good. Definitely. Yeah, awesome. So we can open up for a little bit of Q and A. Um, thanks, guys. That's lots of love in the chat there. We appreciate that. We'll pass all of that on to the team as well. Um, we're just going to open up for just a really quick, like, you know, five ten minutes of Q and A. So we've got a couple in here which we'll jump into. But if you've got any new questions that you want us to answer about anything we've covered today, or anything about Square Kicker in general, um, feel free to chuck those in there and we'll try and get through as many as we can. So the first question here was from Gary and it said, since uh, more people are viewing on mobile and continuing to trend in that direction, will there be mo more mobile compatibility, specifically any sticky functions? 
We can do some super cool layouts in desktop with Square Kicker, but if a user only sees the site in mobile, it loses that special source. Mm. Well, that is where Square Kicker can come to the party. So I'll just open up the um, tutorial again and I will, where's my share screen button here? Let's open up this sticky feature here. Cool. So again, you kind of saw this site here, but I haven't even touched it on mobile. So let's just go and see what it looks like on mobile specifically. So yep, there's some interesting things here. It didn't quite look exactly like this. So the way you can use sticky now is you can actually go into say this sticky options here all look good. Maybe I want this to be my mobile. I actually don't want all these things moving around differently. So you can use Fluid Engine to make these bigger or smaller. But for the sake of time, I'm just going to head into here and go into Advance and go to Sticky Block and just go None. Now, what have I just done there? Well, that's not sticky anymore. So let's just go back to the desktop and just make sure I didn't break something. Nope, that's still sticky. So what you're able to do is you see how this is saying top. When I flick over to mobile, it's none. So you actually can set sticky as well as pretty much any single device or um, any single setting in Square Kicker, you can set per device. Now this is cascading, which means it flows down. So this is all devices. So if you change the color, the font, the width, the height, it will actually flow to all devices because you don't necessarily want to have to go through every device just to change it. However, if you want to go to another one and override it or tweak it, that will change that device and smaller. So if you wanted to change both tablet and, mo and mobile, change a tablet and both tablet and mobile will have that setting. But of course you can go through then and actually assign individual settings for every single block. Another quick tip as well is that let's just say that you have a, a unique setting that, or a positioning that is so vastly different that that's not even working. Even Squarespace isn't coming to party and allowing you to put that in the right spot. Or you have a whole series of blocks that you don't even want to show anymore. You can then head over to your section and as you click on the square kicker at the bottom is visibility, you can show where you want these, these sections to display. So if you say, I actually don't want this entire section to show a mobile, you can hide it, maybe duplicate it, and then make your own mobile section and again, reverse it. So only show that section on mobile. So that gives you the real freedom of saying you can have an entire different site for mobile if you really wanted to have all your desktop sections and have all your mobile sections and create like a completely different website. The funny thing is you can actually, if you really want to create a different website based on if it's a laptop, if it's a tablet, if it's a mobile, you can get a different color theme. You could do whatever you want. I guess the freedom is really up to you to do how that looks. Hope that answers the question. <laughs> it sounds like a lot of time too. <laughs> Lots of options in there. Mm. Cool, thanks for that, Gary. If we um, aren't answering your questions in the way you had imagined, or if there's something else that we haven't covered, um, feel free to always chuck stuff to us in customer support. Generally on there, it's Nick and I answering everything anyway, because we are still quite a small team. So um, you will be getting one of us answering mm -hmm. you and we are more than happy to hear from you in there. Can um, I just jump in really quickly? The duplicating yeah. pages uh, we went over, there's one thing I forgot to mention. So when you're duplicating a page, of course, all your Square Kicker edits come over. It doesn't work for blocks or blogs yet, or for that matter, any kind of collection type events, products, et cetera. The reason that is because there's a very different specific API that's being called for every single one of those. And we only now just released the pages um, duplicating function. So there will be a time in the future where we'll have more options for all those things. So that's still to come. So it's just pages for now. Brilliant. I'm just going to slide another question in here um, really quickly, which Andreas has put in. So they've just said, as a beginner, I've only just designed for desktop and mobile, but are the other two device settings, laptop and tablet, really as relevant as desktop and mobile? Um, can you skip it or should you cover all four devices? That's really probably a personal preference thing and, and something you're going to want to interact with your client a lot on. It might depend who their clientele is, um, you know, what what stats they see of who's interacting with their site where you know some sites are particularly driven for desktop because you know that's the best experience that the user is going to get there if it's a you know a, a really mm. heavy sales page or something like that um you know if it's something where people are coming to it straight from mobile all the time obviously that's where you're going to focus um if you have got more of a niche clientele that are viewing it on those laptops um or the tablet sizes um, it might be worth there. So just, mm. I would say a lot of communication with your client around there, but it's always worth just flicking through those things just to double check them. Um, it may be that you don't put a huge amount of time into specifically designing something for the other two sizes, but you just want to check everything's lining up. Okay. Mm. And that can be as simple as a five minute tweak here or there. 
I actually have one thing to add. I just got asked this question on a customer support channel as of recently, and I thought, you know what? I wonder what Google Analytics has to say about this because they have all this information, right? So we went to our website, thought, who is visiting our website on what device? 68% were on mobile, 20 something were on desktop, and then like a few in-betweeners on tablet and laptop. So like, in the end of the day, you can worry about those, you know, four or five percent. Maybe I think it was six percent on a on a tablet. So you could worry about those indiv individual devices, but you have to look at your ROI, your your you know return on investment. Is it really worth spending an extra twenty hours to customizing a tablet for the small group of people who might show up on those sites, or you worry about the majority of which actually is on mobile? So I would I would design your mobile before I would think about even designing your desktop. Yeah, cool. Um. So Kevin has asked a question here. So we're using a new software today and I'm loving it with these questions popping up. That's very cool. Um, so it says back on presets really quick. I've had um, blocks that have copied with a preset appear to have the presets carried over and then disappear the next day. When they show, sorry, then they show when I actually manually toggle the preset instead of leaving a copy as it is, should I try reinstalling Square Kicker? Any ideas what might be going on there? It sounds like, and this this happens a lot. Anytime Square Kicker changes are just magically disappearing. Like the, the, this isn't technically possible. Nothing you can do would, would change this unless you're physically deleting it, because all this all that data, the source of truth, is actually on the server. The the code that's being printed is just something that's being rendered, and you're in control of that code by hitting save and closing and, and things like that. So if you if you've not deleted something, that means there was another issue that's happened that's not, you know, nothing that you've done. Um, but potentially what people fall in, in the trap of if you have multiple browser windows open on your website at the same time, that's different instances of that same website across your browser. So if you go to one browser and one website, or one tab, and you make an hour worth of changes and you might close that window and then the next day you open up another window and it's sitting there ready to go and you make another change, what you've done is whatever state or instant that browser window was in before you refreshed it was gonna push new changes and overwrite the last day's worth of work you've done over here. This happens a lot when you have multiple users on the same website. In fact, we're always asking each other, hey, Nick, have you, are you outside of the mouse or cursor website yet? Are you outside of this one? Because I need to go in and make changes because you don't wanna override each other because that is a pain. We're kicking each other um, out all the time. We're making tutorials, aren't yeah. we? Trying to get all that content out on the same day and it's yeah. jumping in and out there. So Squarespace isn't like Google Docs. You can't just go in and like micromanage each other's changes and see them live. You have to always refresh to get those new changes. And if you refresh and over the top of each other, it just becomes a pain. So you can overwrite yourself quite easily. So I would just try to stick to a one tab website when you're designing. Cool, it sounds like that has answered your question there, Kevin. But if ever you are having trouble, especially if something like that is occurring over and over again, chuck us that um, customer support and you can always go ahead and invite us as a contributor straight away um, and we can jump in and have a look for you. So if anything doesn't make sense like that, please feel free to reach out. Just Kevin. Cool, it looks like we might have one more question on here, which is um, from Michael. It says, is there ever gonna be hover effects for text? Are you going to make a tool where the text will change color based on the block it is scrolling over? Block that is scrolling over. Mm. Well, that's a whole different thing. So one's <laughs> one's about hover. One's about when it animates on a different location of the screen. So there's there's a couple different things you could do here. I'll I'll answer the first one is about can you change hover effects on color. So the answer is this is a feature that we're already working on. I mean, we probably could have pushed it out when we pushed out hover. It's all technically working, but we haven't tested it. So there's a lot of things to test. Ultimately, if we don't do enough testing, there's more bugs, more customer support, more unhappy people broken website. So we try really hard to make sure we test things. And you can imagine if we open up the floodgates of hover on everything, there's a lot <laughs> of testing to do. Every device size to every single block to every single instance on classic on fluid. So there's just a lot to do. And so that's something that we want to do. But again, we need like 50 interns first to make sure we test everything right. Um, number two is, can you change a block when it scrolls on hover? The, uh, or when it scrolls, the answer is kind of an interesting one that you can kind of do that, but you can't tell where the block's going to be on the page to know when to change the color. But what you can do, and this is something we're going to introduce in the tutorial later on, is you can change a block's visibility on scrolling effects. So when a block is scrolling to say 20% of the screen, you can say, hey, look, now change it to hidden or just make it slowly fade away for you know that those few percentages. And then if you have another block that's stacked on top, that again reveals itself, it looks like it's changing color, 
but all it's doing it's hiding one block and another one is getting revealed so this is a really fun trick what we've done with shape blocks we can put a shape block over the entire block of the website and on scroll it's changing color but actually it's hiding and another one is showing so that's a really fun trick you can actually try using with your text if you line your text up right to be the exact same use a duplicate function hide and show based on scroll movement and you can probably make some pretty cool designs with that yeah cool awesome i think that is uh, all of the questions in there does anyone have a last minute question they want us to answer Mm -hmm. no, I'm getting crickets. That's great. Cool. Um, well, thank you very much for joining us. We really appreciate that. We know it's a really busy time of year for everyone wrapping up projects. And I know, you know, clients always want everything done before Christmas. So um, we feel your pain there. I hope it's all going well and that Square Kicker is helping relieve a bit of that time pressure for you. Um, we just a couple of reminders make sure you check out that inspiration site if you've got an amazing site that you've been working on please send it through to us we love seeing them um, and we would love to feature some of your amazing mm. work up there if you have any further questions or this has sparked an idea that you want to try out uh, but it doesn't quite go as the way you planned and you want to be able to chat to us chuck that in customer support that'll be nick or i on there answering you um, and then lastly make sure you keep an eye out for that mouse cursor competition we're going to run it's going to be really fun and we are very excited to see what mm. you will create on there and hopefully um, someone will win some cool <laughs> square kicker stuff so thank you very much for joining us we appreciate it and we'll uh, see you guys next time cool thanks guys